Hello, I hope you're doing well and that you are gaining a new perspective of your faith and a profound experience with your family during these faith formation discussions. This will be our third lesson in the series and in today's discussion, we're gonna pivot into a different direction. Today's lesson will allow us to focus on a different theme. Now, for the past two weeks, we have hopefully built a solid foundation as we grew in our ability to talk and listen and discuss different topics with our families. But now we're gonna to begin to look at our calling as Christians and mainly to know who God is and what he is asking of us. Now, in this first discussion in the second phase, we'll have you look at one of the most profound stories in the gospels. It's the stories known as Peter's Confession because in it, Jesus compels his disciples to look within themselves and try to understand who Jesus really is. As we peer into the story, I'd like for us to place ourselves in the scene. We've all heard the story before, but this time I wanna highlight a few aspects for you. At first, the circumstance is pretty mundane and ordinary. Jesus and his disciples are walking along the way, traveling from one town to another. And in a casual way, Jesus inquires from his disciples as to what the people in the towns are saying about him. Now, it begins as a simple conversation, seemingly to pass the time as they walk along. But after asking them what others are saying, he changes the question to a more profound one. Jesus now asks them, each individual disciple who they think that he is to them, each individually. At the outset, this seems a simple question given the answer to the first question. However, the significance of what Jesus is asking them cannot be understated. Why is that? Well, the first clue is the location of what is being asked. In the story, it states that they're in a region called Caesarea Philippi. Now, for most of us, that may not mean much. However, there's an interesting historical fact that makes this location very significant. On the exact spot in which Jesus asked his, this question, there was a huge temple built on a high cliff that is surrounded by rock. Now, this temple was built for Caesar Augustus in honor of his father, Julius Caesar. There's a very involved historical reference to this, which can be viewed on the Lectio series on Peter, which is available at formed.org. This is an online resource that's offered by St. Anne Church for free to its parishioners and friends. I'll provide the link to this on the church website in the description of this lesson, and I hope you have a chance to view it. However, the shortened version of the story is that Caesar Augustus had the Roman Senate proclaim his father, Julius Caesar, a god. Now that Julius Caesar is dead, his son, Caesar Augustus, is now in power and is by default now the son of God. He therefore proclaims himself as divine as well. So this temple was built in honor of Caesar Augustus by Herod the Great. So you can see there's a lot of characters that you know about, some in scriptures and some from other sources. And this will give us a background to the scene of Jesus and his disciples. So with this context in mind, Jesus asks the question of his disciples in the shadow of the temple of Caesar Augustus, the proclaimed son of God. He asks them, who do you say that I am? Then it is Peter's response that brings the story to a climax. Peter boldly states, that he has come to believe that Jesus is the son of the living God in direct opposition to Caesar Augustus, who is the son of the dead emperor and proclaimed God, Julius Caesar. So the question of Jesus takes on a new and deeper significance for the disciples, but for us, 2000 years later, the question still remains. As a Christian, our confession and profession should also be that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. It is our primary admission as a Christian. Being Christian, that's what we believe. 
Think about it. Even our name Christian implies that we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. However, we're constantly bombarded every day by challenges to our allegiance. But if we truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the true and the living God, then what significance does that mean in our lives? In other words, if we say that we are Christian, then so what? After this profession of our faith, what comes of it? For instance, if we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, and that he died to save us from our sin, then what are we doing about it? To put it in another, maybe more profound way, is to ask the question, if we truly believe that Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, who came into the world, lived and preached, suffered and died, then what importance does that hold in our lives? When we gather each Sunday in celebration and remembrance of what Jesus did for us, do we attend with a joyful and grateful heart? Or do we attend begrudgingly, out of a sense of obligation? Or frankly, maybe wish we were somewhere else? Or even more offensive to God, maybe we wish we weren't even there at all. Remember the story of the priest and the homeless man in the introduction video. If not, go watch it again using the link on the church website. The question that we need to ponder is if we truly and completely believe all of the teachings about Jesus, do we take all that has been given us, all the gifts, all the time in the world, do we hoard it for ourselves and for our benefit alone? Or do we make the conscious decision to live the life that Jesus and the saints exemplify for us? See, this consideration must be a part of our Christian lives every single day. Our answer to it impacts everything we consider, everything we do, every day of our lives. So when we're deciding whether to attend Sunday Mass or not, or are deciding to buy the newest phone or video game just because we want to or not, or when we're trying to figure out how much to give to the church or to charity, or not at all, we need to ask the question that Jesus asked his disciples, and he asks us every day. But who do you say that I am? Well, that's our discussion focus for this week. I told you that we were going to go a little deeper in the water as, as the series progressed, and well, you just dove into the deep end. I hope your discussions and meditations on this week's theme will guide you to a deeper relationship with God. I'm praying for all of you, and I hope that you are being enriched by these discussions. I look forward to seeing you next week as we continue to grow in our faith in the St. Anne Family Faith Formation Series. May your family be blessed this week as God continues to help us to know him, to love him, and to serve him more each day. God bless each of you. Stay safe and pray that we'll gather together very soon. See you. God bless.